It seems like, like they're doing a bit of a push work. Tamina and uh, Natalia. Natalia. Uh, both of them been there a while and been put on the back burner so many times before and stuff. And it seems like they're giving them a little bit of a push. I like to see them challenge for the women's tag team titles. That's why I was going. I, I think yeah. they could probably be a lot. I, road. I yeah. hadn't heard if they gave like Tamina a new nickname. I know Natty now is going by like Ironheart. Yeah, I did mention uh he mentioned that a few times on the show. Uh Tamina I just don't know. They ain't they ain't really said nothing about her. Well you know what they ain't saying is the last name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but then we had the Street Pop Prophets defeating uh Baron Corbin and Sami Zayn. I don't know what the hell they're doing with Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin. Like, you had two big heels right there, and now yeah, you're tagging. You know what? Uh, speaking of tag teams, uh, you know, we often ask, what the hell is going on with Buddy Murphy? And, they, you know, the thing that I'm seeing a lot is that, oh, WWE has nothing for him. They dropped the angle with Aaliyah and, and everything. So I was sitting there thinking, I was like, you know what? They need a tag team in the tag division on SmackDown. They need more tag teams. You can make a tag team with Buddy Murphy because you could tag him up with the guy he tagged with before in Wesley Blake, who is also on SmackDown and now has nothing to do. And yeah. just add to the tag team division there. Yeah. And I was like, man, I said they should do that, but, you know. You're, you're speaking logic here. I know. <laughs> Yeah, WWE messed it up. Hey, they could do it though. You know, no, they might. I you want know. to see them do that because they, they were a great tag team in NXT. Yeah. You know, hell, you need tag teams now. You know. And uh, then, of course, the final match of the evening was uh, Daniel Bryan and Uso. Oh, I think you skipped. You skipped uh, Bianca Belair choosing Sasha Banks. Yeah. I skipped the segment. I didn't have yeah. that on there. Yeah. yeah. They had that segment where I, I knew I knew she was going to piss off. Yeah. Cause like her and Oscar had no interactions. No. And like she never indicated, hey, I want to take on Oscar. It's always I want to prove I'm better than Sasha Banks. And so and this is going to be a dang good yeah. match. And I guess they didn't want her going back and challenging EO again. Nah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually kind of surprised they like didn't have her going and challenging like Kaylee Ray, who got that record you know, streak going. Yeah. Well, she made it to. I often question like what they did with Charlotte last year by having her go back to NXT and challenge for the NXT Women's Title, and we all know what happened there when you know she won the damn thing, and they thought it was gonna bring ratings by having Charlotte Flair on NXT, and it didn't. So I was like, I don't think they're gonna make that mistake again by having a main roster woman go down unless you're gonna put that NXT talent over. Well, that that's the thing. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, they did it with Charlotte Flair, who they should know, not many people want to keep seeing on the TV every week. Yeah. Versus if they did it with Bianca. You know, Bianca's still likable right now. She's, yeah. not, she's not been force-fed down everybody. Yeah, true, 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 true. But Charlotte Flair, uh, she, she, she's trying to get out of her dad's shadow, but it's hard for her to do it. Because everything that she, her whole gimmick is based off of him, and you know it's it's hard for you to do that when that's your dad, the greatest wrestler of all time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, we and got what? How many weeks till Mania? I think it said six, didn't it? Or well, we might be at five now. Well, we got fast lane coming up. Yeah. So. That's like a couple weeks or so. Yeah. But yeah, and then like I think yeah, it was, it was they said six at Monday Night Raw because yeah. it was three weeks till Fastlane and three weeks till after that until Mania. Yeah. So I could see them pulling up a Fastlane storyline for Oscar's side too. What do you mean? Are you talking about with Bianca? With Becky. Yeah. Because Becky basically handed her the belt last year this time. Yeah, after the Money in the Bank. Yep. Yeah. Wasn't it after Mania? No, 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 because yeah, Oscar won the, the Money in the Bank last year. That's what I'm saying. It, it wasn't Money in the Bank after Mania, though. No, no. You well, sure? Wait. It was. It was. Like two months after, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. A month or two months after yeah, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, it was around in there. Yeah, because uh, Becky Lynch beat Shayna Baszler at Mania last year. Yeah, I'm not she sure. did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. 
we then we get into Daniel Bryan versus. Oh, actually, uh, there was another match that we missed, or sort of like segment, which was uh, Cesaro and Seth Rollins, where Rollins trying to, I guess, get Cesaro to join them or something like that, you know, and or apologize or something, and then Cesaro gave him the swing, <laughs> which was hilarious. Uh, I'm looking forward to a match between the two. I know they've wrestled before against one another, but this looks like a good storyline, uh, especially to push Cesaro. Uh, can't wait to see what these two guys do in the ring. And, I, and I see that match taking place at Fast Lane, too. I think it might be. Yeah, I think it, it might have a match and it might not turn out the way we want and it leads down the road to maybe a Mania match. Yeah. And stuff. Because right now, Rollins is not anything going for me. Who? Rollins. Yeah, true. You know. Uh, now we're going to get into the main event of SmackDown, which was Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso. Uh, good match. Damn good match. But And if Daniel Bryan would have uh, oh, no, you know, won this match, he would have gotten his title shot at Fastlane against Roman Reigns. Here's the other thing, too, about that match. Uh, throughout the night, Roman Reigns, I think Edge said something, came out and said something about some type of tag match. At fast lane, yeah, yeah, Daniel but, Bryan and him versus uh, Roman and Jay, yeah. and Daniel Bryan won the uh, title match, and I think Edge and Roman was sort of wanting the tag match or whatever. So I guess this match was hinging on that too, and we got a draw. Oh, the double count out. Double count out. Yeah, double count out. And uh, so for this week, which tomorrow on SmackDown, it set up for a cage match between. Jay Uso and Daniel Bryan, and the stipulations were still the same, pretty much. Uh, so that was pretty much SmackDown in a nutshell from last week and everything. We're moving on to Raw, to bigger things with Raw. Yeah. And, <laughs> go ahead. Well, like I said, I've got the match lineup. I don't remember what the opening segment was. I think it was uh, Drew McIntyre started off the show uh, doing a promo. It's him and uh, for him and Sheamus and how he's gonna get the title back at Mania or whatever. And uh, the Miz comes out and tries to recruit Drew McIntyre to help him out with Bobby Lashley. And Drew McIntyre's like, "No, you on your own, dude. Good luck." And then Sheamus comes out and we get to see probably a slugfest. Best to describe what went down between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. It was a good match. Yeah, it was a good match. Big. In the words of Jim Ross, a slobber knocker. It was a real good. Match. Yeah, I was like, and it was, and everyone was highly impressed with that match. I, I like how uh, the ending was, where Sheamus was going for the bro kick, but damn, Drew McIntyre hit the Claymore in the process of him doing a bro kick, and I was like, damn, it was damn neat. And like, it was a hard fought match, man. I, I can't wait to see more of that, man. Um, moving along, or oh, what you think of it? I thought it was a good match. I knew Drew was going to go over on this match and win. Uh, it was a real good, yeah, real good slugfest. Okay. I, I always like slugfest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next match, and this match and another match later on in the show, I've got a big gripe with. Uh, the next match I got is Nia Jax defeating Naomi. Yeah, she squashed her. I mean, possibly literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she did that little uh, choke bomb or whatever the hell they call it that she did on uh, somebody not too long ago and injured them. Damn, bro. Yeah. She did that same move on uh, Naomi and won. And I was like, man. I was like, I thought they were building them up to be the challengers for the tag team, you know, the women's tag team championship. But, hell, they taking some L's now. And then I think we got Shayna versus Lana, didn't we, after that? No, later on it's Shayna. Okay. But uh, then we had a segment. I do remember this segment. We had a segment with Braun coming out, claiming the conspiracy thing about <laughs> uh, Shane McMahon and Adam yeah. Pierce and everybody's got something against him and yeah. him out of all the shows and everything. Yeah. So Shane came out and said, well, you're getting a title match tonight. You're getting a tag title match tonight. And Adam Pierce is your partner. Yeah. Like, he did bring up a good point, like, he got suspended for putting his hands on Adam Pierce, but Roman Reigns didn't get shit when he was there beating the hell out of Adam Pierce. And I'm like, what the hell's the difference? Well, there he is, Mr. Power Puff himself. Power Puff? Is that 
Powerpuff Girls? Yeah, it's Powerpuff Girls, but it's based off of the, the show The Boys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll fuck boys, I guess. Oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. What is going on? What up, everybody? Uh, what were we talking about before you came in? Oh, we got my raw results. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to pause on the raw results. Oh, no. Okay. Pause. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pause the raw results real quick so that uh, Mr. Otis here can uh, get out, you know, uh, talk about. Ken, his relationship with Ken, and you know how he impacted him as a friend and everything. Well, and like I said, first I think I first met Ken over at Duchess. I don't yeah. know, ironically, where I met all y'all. Yeah. And <laughs> when I say I just remember me and him about to whoop, uh, jump on old Bobby. <laughs> we we, we about about that earlier. about to jump on old Bobby over <laughs> here for talking junk about Booker T. We like, what you? <laughs> well, I told you guys my reason. <laughs> yeah, he, he was about he was about to catch that low high. <laughs> but no, you see, first met Kim, first impression of him was, man, this dude has a, like a wealth of knowledge about yeah. wrestling. Like he knew, like he, where he guy, history he, of a move and everything. Yeah, history of a move, where guy came yeah. from. Like I knew, I think his favorite wrestler was Bad News Brown. Yeah, Bad, Bad News Brown. Brown. He could tell you. And uh, who's the who's the Japanese female wrestler? Uh, Akira Hokuto. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. loved talking about her and Bad News Brown. Yeah, yeah Bad News Brown was this guy. Yeah. I say, me and Ken, I'm going to say, we kind of, like, in terms of, like, ideas, philosophy, we kind of shared the same ideas mm-hmm. to an extent. And, like I said, I still remember, like, one of the, I think we was doing a podcast, or one of the episodes, like, a, two or three months ago. Yeah. I think I had I had picked Ken up from work and we was on the way here. Yeah. We was listening to, uh, I think I was, like my Spotify playlist plays around and stuff. And I think Rick, or no, James Brown came on. Yeah. And we was talking about how I think I had to make it in a Facebook post. We was talking about how I said, man, imagine in the studio, like you know, I said, every James Brown song sounds like a fight scene. Like if you think about it, like the big payback just sounded yeah. like it was just it was like a mm-hmm. dispute in the studio, and then they just started throwing hands. And uh, I'm sitting there, I was like, and then Kim was like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised with James Brown. I'm like, yeah, I said, you hear, every time we. Hit that guitar, man. Somebody, I said, like, he said, bum, 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 bum. I said, somebody's getting, like, somebody's getting their ass whooped in the studio. So then, after that, and I remember, we was talking about, and it was like, we was just talking about, like, oh, because I know he, like, old school, like, he, like, yeah. he was a huge fan of, like, old school, like, R&B and, yeah. like, and rock, I want to say. And we was talking about how, I was like, Man, you know them old school R and B artists would have had all the women. I said they wouldn't know what to do. I said imagine, if, I said imagine if Teddy Pendergrass and James Brown was on the same song. You know, turn it off. Still like, ah, turn them off. I think back in the day they had the egos. I don't think they could do that. They like, like they don't have egos now. Well, no, 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 egos back then they collaborate for some money yeah. though. Back like, then, they had them for, uh, 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 like if you was the lead singer of a band and there was another guy in the band that could sing, it was good. The Temptations. Oh, they could get their ass out. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Yeah. <laughs> and like, with Ken, man, it was just like, the guy had, he just had, like, knowledge of everything. He's yeah. Just, he had, like, a wealth of knowledge of everything. Yeah, like, he did. I guess I still remember that day on, uh, I think, Juneteenth, like, last yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> literally, it was me. Like, we was out there, like, almost 2 o'clock. And the one uncle left. We was out there, like, sitting there just talking about lights and stuff. So, like, and it was raining. And, 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 and it, was, <laughs> it was raining, too, mind you. We was just sitting out there at 3 o'clock in the morning, just reflecting and talking about lights. And I like, think with Buffalo Wild Wings, they closed yep. down and then like, everybody was coming out. Like, everybody was still here. <laughs> dude, we was out there so long. The dude who come out there with the street sweep. Yeah. <laughs> he was probably, what the hell are they still doing? Yeah. What the hell could they be plotting on? They went on to move our vehicles and everything. We were just, sitting there at the vehicles just talking about life, man. Yeah. And yeah, he often did that, yeah, man. We just, like I said, I said one, one of those people, like I said, I'm happy to have got to meet and like I said, our time on this planet. Yeah, just I like, thing too, man. Like I say, about life, yeah. you gotta never take moments for granted. Cause yeah. you never know. You got issues with somebody, right. resolve them, man. Cause yeah. you never know when when that person's time comes and stuff. When yeah. your yeah. time might come, you know. Don't hold any animosity. Work life that shit too, out. Man. Life's too short for them. Yeah, life for, is too short for me. I go for anybody. If you my enemy, hey. I'll Except Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. <laughs> Steven Seagal can go fuck himself. Even on my deathbed, I'll be like, fuck Steven Seagal. Well, well one man now, he's been in some great movies. No, what? <laughs> get out! Get the fuck out! Get out immediately! 